we want to write an equation for the rational function based upon the graph provided. To do this, we'll find the equation of the rational function in factored form, or the form given here below, where a is a constant, and then we'll have factors in the numerator and factors in the denominator based upon the properties of the graph. So looking at the graph, let's start by identifying the intercepts. Notice how we have a y-intercept here of negative three. This would be the point zero, negative three. And we have an x-intercept of negative three as well here. So the function contains the point negative three, zero. Now let's determine the vertical asymptotes. Here's one at x equals negative two. And we have another here at x equals positive two. But notice how the graph behaves differently as it approaches negative two versus how it approaches positive two. What I mean by that is at x equals negative two, on one side the graph approaches the vertical asymptote going upward, and on the other side it approaches going downward. But at x equals two, notice how on both sides the graph is approaching downward toward the vertical asymptote. And if the function approaches downward or upward on both sides of a rational function, it will affect the factors of the rational function. We also need to remember that knowing the vertical asymptotes of the function give us information about the factors of the denominator, and knowing the x-intercept gives us information about the factors of the numerator. And then we can also determine the value of a, or this constant here, using the y-intercept. So let's begin to set this up. We'll have f of x equals a constant a which we'll find in the second step, times a rational function. And as we said before, knowing the vertical asymptotes gives us information about the factors in the denominator. These values of x are zeros of the denominator, which means if x equals negative two is a vertical asymptote, then x plus two must be a factor of the denominator. And if x equals positive two is a vertical asymptote, the denominator must contain a factor of x minus two. There's more to it than this. As we said before, at x equals two, because the function is approaching downward on both sides of the vertical asymptote, that means we'll have two factors of x minus two in the denominator. At x equals two, they're approaching in different directions, one upward and one downward, so we only have one factor of x plus two. And now let's consider the factors of the numerator, which we can determine using the x-intercept. If the function contains the point negative three, zero, that means f of negative three is equal to zero, or negative three is a zero of the function. Well, f of x is equal to zero when the numerator is equal to zero, which means if we have an x-intercept of negative three, then x plus three must be a factor of the numerator. Notice if x is negative three, the numerator is equal to zero, and therefore the function value is zero. And now the last step, we want to determine the value of a using the y-intercept. So if the function contains the point zero, negative three, that means f of zero is equal to negative three. So we'll find f of zero, which will allow us to find the value of a. So we'll have a times, replacing x with zero, we would have three in the numerator, we would have two in the denominator, and then negative two squared, and this must equal negative three. Looking at this fraction here, we'll have three over four times two or eight, so we have three eighths a equals negative three. Now we'll multiply both sides by the reciprocal, or eight thirds. Put this over one. So on the left we just have a, and on the right we have negative eight. So putting all the pieces together, our function f of x is equal to negative eight times a factor of x plus three, divided by one factor of x plus two and two factors of x minus two. This rational function has all the characteristics provided by the graph.